first of all uh, welcome in my channel and uh, today i'm going to tell you about my membership plan first of all uh, i will provide you dotnet core video tutorial dapper tutorial rest rest api tutorial angular uh, angular video tutorial and uh, not only video tutorial i will uh, provide you complete source code okay and it's not only a simple video tutorial it's a project based video tutorial so each technology have minimum two projects so guys this is a project based courses in all technologies just 800 rupees and you focus that it's not only a technology it's a roadmap okay so that is the complete roadmap of dotnet core and that video tutorial is providing you a past deal for you okay so first of all i will provide you dotnet core and uh, video tutorial it's not only based uh, it's not only simple video tutorial again i repeat you a uh, project based video tutorial so i will cover it uh, all design patterns and uh, solid patterns and uh, architectural designs okay so uh, i will give you uh, clean architecture based projects okay so uh, that is dotnet core and uh, that dotnet core used entity framework core and sql server in further video i will use adio.net and the dapper and uh, just after that i will use blazor for as a front end and angular as a front end and the react as a front end uh, so use rest api so it's a based on project uh, okay and it's a road map so that we can cover all the topics of the full stack development so this is only 800 rupees i will uh, you will uh, you just pay me 800 rupees and get all video tutorials okay so uh, day by day and uh, if you are belong from other country just pay a dollar 15 and it's only a one time fees that is again i repeat you one time fees just only pay 800 rupees and get the source code and complete video tutorials okay so how to get the deal just fill this form that is your name your email id your contact number contact number is not necessary transaction reference id order id or paypal id if you are belong from india just pay using upi id and uh, just add your transaction reference id uh, and after that uh, if you are belong from other country just use this my uh, paypal id and this is you can use this qr code also okay and submit the form after submit your form you will get a notification uh, via email and uh, start your journey for the membership okay so uh, just find the link of this form in your video description box so must to in this video tutorial this time i'm going to tell you about uh, clinic management system and uh, i'm going to design a api for clinic management system and uh, the first uh, first of all i want to talk about uh, the endpoints of clinic management system and here we have the first part is authentication and authorizations so uh, user authentications i mean to say that uh, in which we have three users the first one is the admin second one is the doctor and third one is uh, you know um, that is the staff helper staff so uh, user authentications i mean to say that only uh, just put it only the login functionality and here we have a post action method for the api auth and the login so, and the description is authenticates uh, the user and the provides a jwt token okay and here we have a body that is username and passwords required from the client side and just response back to the client that in the form of the token as well as the role okay now the second endpoint is uh, talk about the patients so in the patients we have uh, get all patients endpoints like that api slash patients and description is retrieve a list of all patients and response back to the client is id that is type of integer name is a type of string and the mobile is a type of string and you can take it any uh, number of fields in in your patient's uh, model okay so that one is the uh, dot 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 and the next one is get patient by id so just i want to get only one patient at a time so that we can use api patient id is here now now the next one is a search patient if you want to search a patient like a description search for patient by their name and the mobile number so query parameter is name and the mobile and response back to the id that is type of integer name is a type of string mobile is a type of string 
and the next one is create a new patient so you can use api slash patient with the verb post action method and describe is add a new patient the body part is name mobile address like that response back to the uh, client is id and uh, messages that is patient created successfully now the next one is uh, Okay, so uh, it's a new updated information about the patient, like uh, update patient information, like a put API patient and ID, and uh, you know that uh, that is the ID is the uh, URL query uh, parameter, and uh, description is update the information of an existing patient. Body is name, mobile address like that, and response is message and patient updated successfully. If you want to delete any patient like API patient ID, uh, delete a patient record and response back to the client in the form of message that is patient deleted successfully. Okay. Now the next one uh, module is going for the medicine inventory. So get all medicines first, get API medicines. Uh, description is retrieve a list of medicines optionally filtered by category. Okay. So, uh, you know, Query parameter is category and the response back to the client is ID, name, category and quantity. Get medication by ID, uh, it's a URL parameter is ID and uh, description is retrieved detailed information for a specific medication. And response back to the client that is ID, name, category and quantity. Create a new medication that is API in medicines. Descri uh, description is add a new medication to the inventory. Body is name. Uh, category and quantity response back to the client that is ID and the messages now the next one is update medicine information so put uh, is here so API medicine and ID ID is a URL parameter here and description is what that is update the information of an existing medicine and body is name category quantity and like that and responses uh, messages medicine update successfully now the next one is delete medicines. So I want to delete any medicines like from the database table. So you can use this uh, endpoints. Delete a medicine from an inventory response back to the client that is message medicine deleted successfully. Now the fourth part is appointment part. Get all appointments. So the API endpoint is uh, first one is a verb that is get API appointments. And description is retrieve a list of all appointments response back to the client that is in the form of ID, patient ID, uh, doctor ID and date. Get appointment by ID. So the URL parameter is ID here and the description is retrieve detailed information for a specific appointment like ID, uh, response back to the client ID, patient ID, doctor ID, date, etc. Now the next one is create a new appointment. So the verb is post. And the URL endpoint is API appoint, uh, appointments. Description is scheduled a new appointment. Body is patient ID, doctor ID, date, like that. And response back to the client is ID and messages. Now the next one is update appointment information by their ID property. And description is update the information of an existing appointment. Body is uh, patient ID, doctor ID, and date. Response back to the client like messages appointment updated successfully. Now the next one is a delete appointment. So you can use API appointment, uh, appointment and ID. Description is delete and appointment records response back to the client that is message and appointment deleted successfully. Now the next and the last one is a report, get report. API and reports description is uh, retrieve reports based on patient severity and the time interval. Query parameter is severity and uh, interval and response back to the client that is in the form of severity, count and interval. Okay, let's get started with the Visual Studio. First of all, I want to create a new web API project that is ASP.NET Core Web API and click to the next. And the project name is uh, I want to add, uh, you know, a clean architecture based uh, API system. So right now i'm using uh, you know uh, that is a clinic 
management okay clinic management dot api it's a api project you know and the solution name is clinic management okay and right now i'm using dotnet 8.0 uh, long term support and just to create it so i'm going to uh, add a you know um, first of all i want to add connection string with the sql server so just open app settings.json file okay so first of all i'm going to add a connection string here and you know that connection string with the sql server that's like this okay and now change the database name first and that database name is clinic clinic api db okay so that is the database name now save this and i want to register this connection string in program.cs file so here i'm going to add register okay before going to add register connection string here i'm going to add identity with the db context so just i want to add a new api uh, new project here so just create a new project and that is the class library project you know and that is clinic management dot repository so the next one is the clinic uh, management dot repository and here we have a default class so i want to delete this class first okay now just after that i want to add a new data section here okay and under the data section we just add a new application db context so add application db context here now application db context is actually inherited by the identity db context because uh, in later videos i'm going to use authentication authorization with the help of identity and with the jwt so identity db context is actually existing in microsoft.asp.net core.identity.entity framework core package so install it okay now the next one is uh, that one is the identity db context here now i want to uh, use constructor here so that one is the constructor so public application db context db context options application db context options and these uh, that options pass to the base class that is identity db context here and just i want to use uh, microsoft entity framework core okay now the next one is to register this uh, db context in your api section so i want to add uh, here so you know register db context here now the register db context is like that so here we have a builder.services.addb context with the application db context so just I want to add a reference here first of the application db context is actually existing in a repository a layer. So just right click on the dependency at project reference here, clinic management dot repository. Also you can add, uh, you know, a SQL server um, package manager. So just manage new get package and browse SQL server. Now the SQL server is Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQL Server and install it. Just to choose I accept all. Okay. And wait for some time. Okay. Now the next also I want to add a tools package here. So just use tools. And that one is Microsoft Entity Framework Core.Tools package here. Just I accept it. Okay. Now after that, you can know that 
everything is installed in the clinic management.api and now resolve application db context clinic management.repository data use sql server entity framework core okay so everything is fine i think also i want to add identity uh, uh, configuration here so you know builder dot services dot add identity and in identity we use I, uh, identity user instead of application user identity user and identity role also I want to add uh, add entity framework store that is application db context also I want to add uh, add uh, default docker provider okay so that one is you know uh, to use identity as a service okay now the next one is to uh, configure JWT so you know add JWT authentication so add JWT authentication like that so here we have a uh, JWT authentication builder dot services dot add authentication JWT better default and JWT better default is actually existing in package uh, like install package Microsoft ASP.NET Core dot authentication dot JWT better find and install latest version now here you can see that here we have only one uh, authentication scheme is here also uh, that token validation parameter I want to add using Microsoft uh, this this one is here that's that one is Microsoft dot identity model dot token okay and I want to add both authentication and sign in and challenge scheme so we can use here options okay and that one is options dot default authentication scheme is JWT better default dot authentication scheme and the next one is option dot default challenge scheme is also this this one and sign in scheme is also use this one options dot default sign in scheme is JWT better default dot authentication scheme okay now the next one is you know add JWT bearer and valid validate each one is true the, but I want to take it false here because validate each one I mean to say that uh, you can provide a valid each one of the token and valid audience uh, list of the audience so also I want to take it false so that we can not uh, we, uh, we not provide the valid each one and valid audience here. So there is a no need because I right now uh, I'm taking uh, false. Okay. The next one is validate each or sign in key true. That's must to true. Each or sign in key new symmetric security key. Encoding is system dot text. UTF eight get bytes builder dot configuration JWT colon key. JW, JWT colon key is actually available in your uh, app settings dot JSON file. So just open your app settings for session here and here we go so JWT and the key so JWT is a you know primary task here and the key is you know this is my key Okay, this is my key. Now that one is a JWT and the key. So here we have a JWT authentication and token verification code. That 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 is the token verification code here. 
and the next one is to uh, use authentication here so app dot use authentication also uh, use builder dot services dot add authorization builder dot services dot add authorization sorry add authorization instead of add authentication dot add authorization okay that's good okay so the next one is to add you know uh, the default db initializer class so here we have a you know uh, that part is related to your uh, repository and here I'm going to add infrastructure so add a new directory and that is infra uh, that is implementation that is implementation is here and also I want to add a application layer so add a new project first class library project and the project name is clinic management dot uh, that is application layer okay and that is the repository layer and uh, here we have the application layer so under the application layer you can just add use cases so the first one is the services layer so add a new directory that is services another directory is use cases or you can say that common directory under the common directory you can add use cases like I want to add a new file and the new file name is a uh, db initializer class so idb initial dot cs file idb initial I want to seed user and data so task seed user role okay now here we have a idb initial and I want to implement this idb initial in implementation directory so new file db initial dot cs implemented by using idb initial sorry uh, but first of all I want to take it as a dependency as as a project reference of your application layer so you can add idb initial here this one and implement it now I want to add three roles in our application the first one is admin the second one is doctor and third one is helping staff now you can use a user manager and identity role add user manager and role manager for dependency injection for doctor injection so here I'm going to add a private read only user manager identity user user manager is only you know control dot Microsoft ASP.NET code or identity and the next one is the role manager so private read only role manager and I want to use both in your constructor dependency injection here so generate a constructor okay now I want to add uh, three roles so first of all I want to check it if uh, not underscore role manager dot role exist async okay dot result instead of dot result you can say dot you know it's a asynchronous method first of all take it asynchronous and now that next one is getAwaiter.getResult getAwaiter 
oops dot get result if role manager dot role exist admin is not there then you can say you have to create three roles the first one is to add uh, you know admin helping staff and the doctor so first of all i want to take it a new static file so that we can pick uh, this file okay so that is the details and that one is okay it's not a uh, okay i i will take it hard coded data here underscore role manager dot create async new identity role admin similar like that i want to add control d for the doctor and the next one is to add you know uh, helper helping stuff okay okay so here we have three roles admin doctor and helping staff now i want to add three users so add three user users and assign their roles and assign their roles so the first one is identity user, new identity user, like admin. I want to take it both username and email are the same. So admin at the rate of gmail.com. Email is also same. Okay. Now I want to create a user manager dot create async. That one is user manager dot create async that is user. Okay. Also, uh, I want to uh, add this admin here, uh, like admin uh, to the admin role. So first of all, create a uh, sorry. First of all, create a user with their password. So I want to add admin. In their password is admin at the rate of one two three four five. And now I want to create uh, admin role here, like admin assigned to the role that is admin. Okay, similar like that. Uh, I want to create a, a rest user, create a rest a doctor. So the username is like that. The username is doctor at the rate of uh, gmail.com okay and the email is uh, doctor.com okay and user manager dot create async doctor and their password and also I want to assign their role okay now the next one is to create help and staff and this one is staff at the rate of gmail.com and this one is email staff at the rate of gmail.com now I want to add okay and this one okay so here we have three roles like admin doctor and helping staff and this one now i want to uh, add this file and call this file uh, in program.cs file okay so see you in the next video